Now one of the biggest feature requests for CS6 Premiere Pro was that timeline trimming was brought in. Now you can still go and use the trim monitor as I showed in the last tutorial and it is actually a very powerful device but many people felt that having to do this extra step of opening up the trim monitor was too much and they just wanted to be able to access their edit points in the timeline and edit them straight away without any problems. So because of the request this has been introduced for CS6 and I think generally speaking this is the way that most people are going to want to do it unless you're used to the legacy trim monitor. Now the first thing we need to do is actually select our timeline and that is shift 3 and once we've selected our timeline then we can use the up and down arrows to get to the next edit point. Okay so up and down arrows will shift us to edit points. Incidentally if you have multiple clips on different lines and you want to get to any edit point on any particular video track just hold the shift key while you're doing the up and down arrow. We'll have a little look at that in a minute. Right, so say I'm part way through a clip and I decide actually you know what I want to change that edit point. The first thing to do is hit the T key. Now in the previous releases T would open the trim monitor but if I hit T now it takes me straight to the nearest edit point and opens up with a default rolling edit. Okay, it's important to say this is a default rolling edit. So if I want to know how to edit this in the timeline, you can see that my program monitor has changed and instantly it's got lots of information. So it's showing me these two clips, the time code that shows it, the time code from the original media, from the tape that it was originally captured on. And then I've got options for going backwards and forwards here. Now obviously I want to use keyboard shortcuts, I don't really want to use the mouse, however if I do want to use the mouse, I can simply click here and get a rolling edit or I can click in the timeline itself and get a rolling edit if I want to use the mouse itself and it gives me dynamic feedback as to how things have changed so I can see what the out point of the previous one is and the in point of the next one is going to be simply by scrolling it backwards and forwards hit T again to get back into that editing mode but you'll see here that we've got ways of going backwards and forwards one frame at a time and five frames at a time now for the PC you can see that the keyboard shortcut is control plus the right arrow. I believe on the Mac it is alt plus the right arrow but just double check when you open it up to the first time to see if it's command or alt. I believe it's alt right arrow and then for five frames it's alt shift right arrow whereas on PC it's control right and control shift right and the same backwards it's just the, the left arrow. Okay so if I now want to dynamically trim in my timeline all I need to do is hold the control key and start using the right and left arrow. So if I hit the right arrow I'm rolling my edit point forwards. And if I hit the left arrow I'm rolling it backwards. So I can see where the previous clip is going to end will end just after the wave's gone over and I can see where the next clip is going to begin. So that's how I can actually move forwards. If I want to go five frames at a time for me on a PC it's control shift on a Mac it's probably option shift and then I can go five frames forward and five frames backwards until of course there is no more footage. Okay so that's a rolling edit. If I then want to go to a different type of editing tool I simply hold the shift key and hit T again. Now I've hit T one more time and that's showing me that I now have a ripple edit. I can see that from the yellow bracket. The ripple edit for the first frame and I can see up here in the program monitor that this is the selected clip and I'm going to ripple this one backwards. So again the same items apply, so if I ripple it it's going to be control left or shift control left or option left and shift option left for a Mac and if I do my control left for me I can start to ripple edit less and less of that clip and make it smaller and smaller. Now if I hold shift and T again I've got the second clip selected. So I now have a ripple edit on these seagulls flying. So if I hold the control and the right arrow button, I'm going to start trimming how much of the seagulls I see. And if I do shift control right arrow, I'm going to move five frames at a time. Now if I hold the shift key and hit T another time, I actually get to the trim tool. Now just be careful because if you have the trim tool and you start to trim, and I'll just trim to demonstrate, you'll see that I'm actually going to be adding space into my timeline. Okay, so you'll see down here in my timeline, just zoom in a little bit more, you'll see that what I've done is I've brought in a gap, which will need to be ripple deleted. And to do that, really, you do need to click here and 
the ripple delete. There is a keyboard shortcut, but you still need to actually select the area that you've got. So that would be the only way to get rid of those. I'm going to hit T to get back into my trim mode again. Now I've hit T again, and you'll notice I've gone straight back to the rolling edit. So Shift T takes me to the ripple one way, Shift T ripple the other, Shift T trim mode one way, Shift T trim mode the other, Shift T back to my rolling edit. And if I then go up and down arrows, I can go between my different trim points my different cuts so that I can edit them as I like. So it's a very quick and simple way of getting between your edit points in the timeline having plenty of feedback here. But not only that, I have this selected and let's say I want to move this 15 frames one way or the other. Well what I can do is I can type 15. I haven't selected anything, I'm just going to type 15 on my number pad. And then I'm going to hit enter on my number pad. And when I do, the whole rolling edit point or the edit point is shifted 15 frames forward. If I just type minus 15 and hit enter on my number pad, you'll notice that the rolling edit, the edit point, has now rolled back 15 frames. And I can choose any number I like. So if I do 30 frames, enter on my number pad, it's gone forward 30 frames, minus 45, enter gone back 45 frames. So you can choose to move rolling edit points or edit points or even just trim points. So if I do control T and go forward till I'm at a trim point, I do minus 15, enter, you'll see that I've actually created a gap in my timeline and trim that particular clip back 15 frames. I'm going to control Z to undo that and take it back and I'm going to shift T till I get back to my rolling edit point. Equally, if I've got a whole bunch of edits I want to move at one point, if I hold the control key down, again, you have to check whether it's the option key or the command key on a Mac. I don't have a Mac to try it on. And I window select, you'll see that I'm actually selecting edit points. So all of those edit points are now selected because I held down that key. And then if I type in minus 15, enter on my number pad, all of those have moved backwards and forwards. And I can still use the control or alt right arrow button or left arrow button and control shift or alt shift right arrow and left arrow to move five frames at a time. So you can see that this is a very dynamic and easy way of rolling and changing your clips in the timeline. Generally speaking you're not going to want to do multiple clips at the same time so what you're probably going to want to do is go to the first clip and edit it move it backwards and forwards and then down arrow to the next clip and then alter and change that one down arrow and just whip through the timeline very quickly to change all these bits and pieces and as I said if you've got clips on multiple layers let's just put um, another version of something on the, on the top layer let's put this seagull on a layer above and let's have that with say the, the harbour thing here just going to trim that down to size Okay, so I've got two items here. So if I hit T to go in my trim mode now, it's going to go to the last selected trim points. So T takes me to the last selected trim points. However, if I now do my up and down arrows and go to different trim points, or I do shift up and down to try and get to the trim point in the middle so I can try and get to this trim point, if I hit T there, it's going to go back to the previous trim point. I'm just going to do shift T to get back to a rolling edit. So again, I'm going to try that shift, down arrow to get to the one that I want to edit, which is on a different layer. And then I hit T to try and get to that one, and it won't select. Well, it won't select simply because of the header selection. If I want to just select this layer, then I would select video 2, deselect video 1, and the same with audio 2, and deselect audio 1. Then when I do up or down arrow, it's only going to look at what's in video layer 2. So if I do the down arrow, it's going to go to the video layer 2 cuts and won't look at video layer 1 unless I'm holding the shift key and I can get to it. But what if I want to be able to get to all my edit points? Simply select all the headers. So I'm going to shift and select and that selects all the video headers. And again shift and select audio 1 and that selects all the audio headers. So they are now all selected and I don't need to hold the shift key when I'm going my up and down arrow. Because all the headers are selected it's going to go to the next edit point on whatever layer it may be and allow me to then do my timeline dynamic editing. So if I just want to do one layer I just deselect the other layers and just make sure that I've just got one layer selected and that will just deal with video one. If I just want to deal with video two 
then I can deselect video 1, deselect audio 1 and audio 2 and that's going to do the up and down arrow will simply deal with the edit points there, hit T for trim mode takes me back into the trim mode for those if I want to do all of my trim points and be able to just cycle between all of them without needing to hold the shift key if I hold the shift key while I select video 1 all the video headers are selected and if I hit the shift key while I hit audio 1 all the audio headers are selected and the up and down arrows will go between any edits and allow me to change them as I need in the next tutorial we're going to look at one other very good feature for timeline editing and that's called a JKL edit where you can actually use the standard JKL keys to perform all the edits you need in the timeline in Premiere Pro.